In our previous video in this series, we discussed the Sassanid general Bahram Chobin's successful campaigns in Central Asia against the Gokturk Khaganate and his relatively successful one in the Caucasus region. However, despite some minor setbacks by the Romans, the ruling Shahanshah Hormizd IV decided to insult Bahram by sending him a humiliating gift. Bahram was not going to take this insult lying down, and hostilities were to commence between the two in what was known as the First Sasanian Civil War. Bahram, infuriated by Hormid's insults, responded by rebelling, and due to his noble status and extensive military knowledge, was joined by his army and many others. He then appointed a new governor for Khorasan to take his place, and afterwards set out for the Sasanid capital of Tesiphon. This marked the first time in Sasanian history that a member of the Parthian dynasty challenged the legitimacy of the House of Sasan by rebelling. A general named Azen Gushnas was sent to suppress the rebellion but was murdered in Hamadan by one of his own men, Zadespras. Another force under Saramis the Elder was also sent to stop Bahrom, but was defeated and captured by him. He was then executed by being trampled to death by elephants. The route taken by Bahrom was presumably the northern edge of the Iranian plateau, where he repelled a Roman-funded attack by Caucasus Iberians and other allies in Adarbargan, and suffered a minor setback by a Roman force deployed in Transcaucasia. He then marched south towards Media, where Sasanian monarchs, including Hormizd, ordinarily resided during the summer. Hormizd then left for the upper Zab River in order to cut transmissions between Tesiphon and the Persian soldiers on the Roman border. Around that time, the troops were situated outside Nisibis, the chief Iranian city in northern Mesopotamia. They, however, also rebelled against Hormizd and pledged their allegiance to Bahrom. The influence and popularity of Bahrom continued to grow increasingly. Sasanian loyalist forces sent north against the Persian rebels at Nisibis were flooded with rebel propaganda. The loyalist forces eventually also rebelled and killed their commander, which made the position of Ormizd untenable. Ormizd then planned to navigate the Tigris River and take sanctuary in al hira the capital of the Arab vassal kingdom, the Lakhmids. However, before Ormizd was able to leave Tesiphon, he was overthrown in a relatively bloodless palace coup by his brothers-in-law Vishtam and Vinduyi, who both equally hated Hormizd. Hormizd was shortly blinded with a red-hot needle by the two brothers, who put the latter's oldest son Khosrow II on the throne, who was their nephew through his mother's side. The two brothers shortly had Hormizd executed. Nevertheless, Bahrom continued his march to Tesiphon, now with the pretext of claiming to avenge Hormizd. Khosrow then wrote the following to Bahrom. Khosro, king of kings, ruler over the ruling, lord of the peoples, prince of peace, salvation of men, among gods the good and eternally living man, among men the most esteemed god, the highly illustrious, the victor, the one who rises with the sun and who lends the night his eyesight, the one famed through his ancestors, the king who hates, the benefactor who engaged the Sasanians and saved the Iranians their kingship, to Bahrom, the general of the Iranians, our friend. We have also taken over the royal throne in a lawful manner and have upset no Iranian customs. We have so firmly decided not to take off the diadem that we even expected to rule over other worlds, if this were possible. If you wish for your welfare, think about what is to be done." Bahrom, however, ignored this warning. A few days later, he reached the Nahrawan Canal near Tesiphon, where he fought Khosrow's men who were heavily outnumbered but managed to hold Bahrom's men back in several clashes. However, Khosrow's men eventually began losing their morale and were in the end defeated by Bahrom's forces. Khosrow, together with his two uncles, his wives, and a retinue of 30 nobles, thereafter fled to Roman territory, while Tesiphon fell to Bahrom. In order to get the attention of the Roman Emperor Maurice, Khosrow II went to Syria and sent a message to the Sasanian occupied city of Martiopolis to stop their resistance against the Romans, but to no avail. He then sent a message to Maurice and requested his help to regain the Sasanian throne, which the Roman Emperor agreed to. In return, the Romans would regain sovereignty over the cities of Amida, Carhe, Dara, and Martiopolis. Furthermore, the Persians were required to stop intervening in the affairs of Iberia and Armenia, effectively ceding control of Lazica to the Romans. In 591, Khosrow moved to Constantia and prepared to invade Bahrom's territories in Mesopotamia, while Vishtam and Vinduyi were raising an army in Azerbaijan under the observation of the Roman commander John Mistakon, 
who was also raising an army in Armenia. After some time, Khosrow, along with the Roman commander of the south, Comentiolus, invaded Mesopotamia. During this invasion, Nisibis and Mardiopolis quickly defected to them, and Bahrom's commander Zarspaham was defeated and killed. One of Bahrom's other commanders, Rizakios, was captured in Mosul and had his nose and ears cut off, and was thereafter sent to Khosrow where he was executed. Some time later, Khosrow, feeling disrespected by Comentiolus, convinced Maurice to replace the latter with Narses as the commander of the south. Khosrow and Narses then penetrated deeper into Bahrom's territory seizing Dara and then Mardin in February, where Khosrow was re-proclaimed king. Shortly after this, Khosrow sent one of his Iranian supporters, Mapod, to capture Tesiphon, which he managed to accomplish. Meanwhile, Khosrow's two uncles and John Mystikon conquered North Azerbaijan and went further south in the region, where they met and engaged Bahrom and his army at the Blarathon River, north of Ganzak in northwestern Iran. The combined Roman Sassanid force was reported to be 60,000 in total, composed of 40,000 Romans, 8,000 Persians, and 12,000 Armenians who served as auxiliary cavalrymen. The numbers of Bahrom's army are unclear, but it is said that he was heavily outnumbered. Their numbers make them arrogant, but their army is a lumbering beast, slow and easy to outwit. But today, we become the agile hunter. Quick and daring will be our watchwords, and we will go them into folly and wear them down. Bahrom was defeated, and thus fled east to the Turks of Hyrcana. However, Khosrow managed to deal with him by either having him assassinated or convincing the Turks to execute him. With that, not only did the civil war come to an end, but a peace was negotiated with the Romans to officially end the war that had been ongoing since 572. For his aid, Maurice received much of Sasanian Armenia and western Georgia, and received the abolition of tribute which had formerly been paid to the Sasanians. This marked the beginning of a peaceful period between the two empires, at least for now.